Muriel Bowser. I uh, have the honor of being the mayor of Washington, D.C., and today I am joined by uh, several directors. Uh, I am joined by the director of the Department of Health, Laquandra Nesbitt, and the director of OCTO, our chief technology officer, Achana Bimalapali. And we are here today to talk about, and I'm also di uh, uh, joined by Director Holmes. And you're from DPW, right? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So uh, we're here to talk about rats. And uh, every day, uh, thousands of community members and government employees are behind the scenes keeping our city running. Uh, and over the last couple of weeks and the next several weeks, we're going to be really focused on uh, the basics of our government operations. And we have uh, really called this effort a Back to Basics DC initiative. And we are highlighting the incredible contributions of our team. Uh, in several agencies. So Back to Basics is about talking about the progress that we've made as a city, uh, but also sharing information about how the government and the community can work hand in hand to even build on our progress. And one of the most important ways is investing in initiatives that keep the city cleaner, healthier, and safer. Unfortunately, like major cities across the country, we're seeing an increase in rodent activity in many parts of the city. Let me just give you a fact. The number of 311 requests for rodent abatement increased almost 65 percent uh, from 2,300 requests in 2015 to more than 3,500 requests last year. So we recognize this as a troubling public health concern for residents and businesses across the city. And that's why today we are announcing three three rodent abatement projects uh, that will help curb this trend. First and foremost, I want to talk about our solar trash can deployment project. The Department of Public Works uh, with the Department of Health and the Office of the Chief Technology Officer are working together to deploy solar trash cans in hot spots, known hot spots for rodent activity throughout the city. These are enclosed rat-proof trash cans that have built-in solar panels, which allow them to compact trash without needing to be connected to the electrical grid. Uh, these trash cans have already been installed on Barracks Row, Freedom Plaza, and Indiana Avenue Northwest. The second initiative I want to announce is the Smart Litter Bin Program. This initiative will lead to cleaner streets and more efficient trash collections. As part of this project, we're testing new uh, solar, uh, new sensor lids that have been placed inside 400 smart bins across the city. These lids are equipped with special technology that communicate how much trash is in the bin real time. And this information will help us develop more efficient collections. Um, also will help us with, with traffic in our high trafficked areas. And the CTO is going to tell us a little bit more about that. We're also very excited about the Waste Compactor Program. This is a million dollar new pilot project that will allow business owners uh, in many commercial corridors like the one we're in, they abut right up to residential neighborhoods. Uh, and so we want to make sure that those commercial corridors have the best trash collection systems that they possibly can. So with this $1 million grant, business owners may buy or lease rat-proof trash compactors for buck trash and other waste, uh, including recyclables. So these are three initiatives that we know will work across all eight wards. And they will work in commercial corridors, uh, and there is also uh, areas where commercial corridors and residential neighborhoods are very close together that this will help uh, us abate uh, rat collections. Uh, we also also uh, want to mention Director Holmes is here. She is the director of the 911 and 311 call center, and her call takers are taking a lot of the calls uh, related to the need for the city to come out and abate rats. Uh, and the technology improvements that we've made at Octo, um, the additional staff that we've made, um, that we placed at Octo, have helped residents and business owners get help more quickly. So let me turn to Do Dr. Nesmith, who will talk about 
the Department of Health initiatives. And I want to recognize our vector team uh, at the Department of Health uh, who get out across all of our neighborhoods and are doing a fantastic job for us. And we want to look for ways that we can give them some help. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Uh, it's really a uh, great opportunity to be out uh, in the community today and having the opportunity to uh, recognize our rodent and vector control team who do a fantastic job of working collaboratively with businesses and with our residents uh, to help improve the hygiene and the cleanliness of our communities here in the District of Columbia. Uh, last year with Mayor Bowser, we launched our Rat Riddance Initiative, uh, which was really a concerted effort to improve the cleanliness of our community and to reduce the rodent population here uh, in the District of Columbia. We have a very vibrant uh, community, a thriving community in the District of Columbia, where we have residents and businesses that uh, live and exist uh, together in thriving corridors such as this one. And we want that to continue. We want our businesses to prosper. We want our residents to live in livable and walkable communities because we know that that helps to improve the health and well-being of our communities, where our residents can walk to the grocery stores that they need to be able to buy healthful foods, where our residents can live in communities where they can shop, where they can dine, uh, where their children can walk to the schools uh, that provide them high quality educational opportunities. And we know that when we have those mixed use communities, there's also the opportunity for more trash. Uh, and when there's the opportunity for more trash, there's an the opportunity for our rodent population to have more food too. Uh, and so one of the things that we set out to do uh, last year with the launch of, of Rat Rich program was to provide more education to our residents and to our businesses of ways that they could reduce the access to that food that those rodents like to have. Uh, and so with the Rat Riddance uh, edu uh, initiative, we kicked off last year with providing a lot of education to our businesses and our residents in terms of ways to safely store uh, food that you may have on your property, uh, ways to best keep your trash, making sure that it has metal lid containers that you keep the trash inside until close to trash pickup day, uh, things of that nature. We also have what we call a meta, uh, uh, wire mesh distribution program uh, so that when you have nice shrubs uh, on your property, both in, uh, for good landscaping in the nice thriving commercial districts like this, or even on your personal property, uh, you can prevent opportunities for rodents to be able to hide uh, and because they need to have a place to live. Uh, so those are the types of things that we have going on in the department beginning last year. As Mayor Bowser are described today, we're kicking off some of our more uh, business-oriented programs and initiatives that will help support our businesses uh, in being able to invest in better ways to store their commercial waste, uh, but also when our residents are out and about in enjoying our neighborhoods and enjoying our communities, having better ways to dispose of their trash so our trash bins are not overflowing in our communities and so that our public works department uh, can be responsive and as well as our business improvement districts being responsive to the removal of that waste, uh, helping to keep our city clean uh, for both our residents and our visitors who come and enjoy a thriving District of Columbia. So we're very happy to be a partner with the District of Columbia. Uh, our our rodent, control, rodent and vector control team uh, responds very quickly uh, when you all request our services. We like to see neighborhoods working together. Uh, if you have a problem in your neighborhood and you give us a call and you have a team in your neighborhood who wants us to provide a service to you. It's always great when you're working as a team to help provide access uh, to property for us so we can come out and provide our abatement services uh, in a one-time uh, effort and then do some follow-up treatments to you in seven to ten days. Uh, when you all work well together as a neighborhood and a community and then work well with us as a department and an agency, uh, we can do a much better job of controlling the rodent control population. So we look forward to continuing to serve you all as your Health Department and continuing to have a great rat riddance initiative here in the District of Columbia. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Let me, so the, the doctor talked about uh, the, our community partnerships and indeed individual neighbors can be helpful if we notice an issue. Frequently, uh, Mr. Brown and his team like to go out and deal with an entire block. Uh, and coordination among neighbors can be helpful. Our ANC commissioners are very helpful in that as well. So let me acknowledge our ANC commissioners who are here. Jerry Malitz, uh, Dan Bradfield, and Randy Speck. Give them a big round of applause and thank you for being here.
I also want to recognize the Ward 3 MOKERS, who are my liaisons in the community with ANCs and civic associations and with all the neighbors. And Philip and Ian are here, so um, they can be helpful in, in all of these regards. So uh, we're going to hear quickly from our chief technology officer. It doesn't, um, you don't always link technology in our, our rat written policies, but in fact, um, there is a link. Uh, and Achana is going to talk about that. Thank you, Mayor. And um, there is a link for technology and everything that impacts the city. One of the things we in city government are trying to do is to ensure that technology really helps solve real world problems. So when we're talking about issues such as rat or trash or even trash pileup, how can technology and some of the solutions we're looking at help achieve the goals that the city has? And so we're, I want to talk a little bit about our smart waste management effort. And this is really um, a coordinated effort between DPW that really has the operational experience to run this. Um, the health perspective, with, you know, Dr. Nett's teams, especially what DOH has been doing, and then on the technology side where we come in and say, how can we use the next generation technologies of sensors and capabilities to really drive forward issues like safety, issues like cleanliness, issues like um, trash pileup, or even just improving the quality of life for residents. So the Smart Waste Management Pilot, I have a handout which we will give out to all of you that really talks about what we tried to do here. As we put sensors in all of these trash bins, we work closely with DP to really identify what we need to start capturing. What are the levels of trash can? What, do that what does that as a city tell us about our city that we're managing? Where are our areas of need? And where are the areas of risk? And right now we're in a very reactive mode. 311 that um, is run very efficiently by Karima gives us all the data, but it's a reactive set of data. And we're trying to move the city into a proactive stance where we learn this information before you complain about it and we can ad and proactively address it. So the smart waste management pilot has been deployed in March. For the next six months, we have 400 sensors that we'll be collecting data from, and we'll be working very closely with DPW and DOH to analyze that data, as well as the 311 data from um, OUC. We're going to be making all this information available to the public through our open data platform, so it will be out for you guys to see. In addition to the smart waste management pilot, there are other ways we wanted to make sure people have the ability to report issues. So on the text to 311 platform that we've been closely coordinating with OUC, we now have a feature to report any rat reports that you have. So option eight on text to 311 lets you report that you want an investigation done if you see rats. And if you report that um, operationally, I think there's a 14 day turnaround for DOH. I, I, yes. I'm just telling you what's in the text message that you will see. But um, this is, again, a way for us to just get a service out there while we're looking at these data sets. And we look forward to working with the um, agencies to get the service out to you. But our goal, again, is to make technology the enabler. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. So we're happy to take any questions. Yes, Tom. Mayor, why this corner? You have a lot of corners with rats. Well, what we know, uh, I think, is, as you heard us mention, Tom, is uh, what we we're, we want to work with all of our commercial corridors, but especially where they abut residential areas. Um, I think that's where we we see a lot of of complaints, and we want to make sure all of our our property owners, both residential and commercial, have the best waste management strategies that they can. Last year, this time, we were on Barracks Row, similarly situated, right up against a uh, residential area. Uh, we learned a lot about how um, building owners and, and tenants are managing trash and doing things even um, as they build out the facilities to maintain trash uh, indoors longer um, in, in, a, in a way that works for the business and works for the community. So, so that's why we're here. Uh, so our Department of Small and Local Business, as well as our, our mokers in Clean City, uh, will be walking, working together with the ANC commissioners and the property owners to make sure that everybody, there's no reason why this corridor in Chevy Chase uh, can't go out and get those um, those compactors, which we know can, can help with uh, waste management. Yes, Matt. Do you believe the abatement of techniques are actually working? And, and if they are, are, are you killing rats? What, what, what are the, what's the way of abating the rat problem? Okay, so I'm Is either going to turn to Dr. Nesbitt and she may and invite her rat experts to come up and join us. 
Uh, so the answer is yes. We do believe the abatement techniques we use are um, highly effective. Uh, however, there is um, a number of factors that contribute to the rodent population uh, increasing. And so I'll let Mr. Brown um, address some of that. Yes, the uh, poison works, but we have to eliminate the food. If the food is not eliminated, it's a hard to kill the rats. So sanitation is pest control. We can't answer that. <laughs> you get it, you're getting thousands of complaints. We, we just go by the number of complaints. Right. So one of the things we like to say is there is no way to do a rodent census. Um, and one of the uh, ways that um, I think a lot of people get a lot of anxiety is that you see these reports that come out that say Washington, D.C. is in the top three, the top four, the top five uh, for rodents uh, in this country. Well, many of those studies or many of those things that are put out are based on uh, one of the largest pest control companies across the United States and the number of calls that they get for service is not based on there actually being a rodent census in the same way that we do a human census in this country every 10 years or annual estimates of the human population. Uh, so our team does not actually go out and count the number of rodents that are present in the city or the number of rodents that die from a result of a application of rodenticide. Um, what they do, give me one second, uh, Mr. Sherwood, what they do is they actually count the presence of rodent burrows, uh, which are the holes that the rodents create um, in order to be able to live in a particular area uh, and use that as an estimate of the severity of the, the problem in a particular neighborhood. One of the things that we'll be doing in combination with um, OCTO and OUC is using that as a better gauge of the severity of a problem in a neighborhood as opposed to the actual number of complaints that come in from 311, uh, which is a new input of data uh, that we'll have to be able to better quantify uh, what have been commonly referred to as rodent hotspots in the district. If I could, you, I think you referenced the Orkin study, the Orkin report earlier this year. I know you didn't want to say Orkin, but I am. I actually called them up and they said that their review includes the entire metropolitan Washington area, not just the district. Correct. So the rats in Arlington are just as important. Cor correct. So uh, thank you for adding that and not making it just the prop Washington, D.C. Uh, proper. Uh, but I think it's very important for people to know that it is not possible to actually, we don't tag and count each specific rodent. Uh, so we do, we do want to make sure people understand that um, the way that we're, we're trying to actually improve the way that we quantify the severity of the problem and deploy our resources to be able to address it. But, but what Mr. Brown said is key, sanitation is rodent control. Yes, ma'am. What agency can businesses contact to get assistance in applying for the Waste Compactor Program? The question was, what agency do businesses contact? And it's the Department of Small and Local Businesses. And we're going to give you some information. They are going to be administering the $1 million grant. I understand that these, um, this equipment is between fifteen dollars and $20,000 per. So we can help a lot of businesses. And I want to call everybody's attention to it because we want to do uh, get the program, this pilot, done by September 30th. So business owners, ANCs, please reach out to us um, so that we can help you. Uh, with that equipment. I also wanted to mention one thing, um, and that is we know when there is a lot of development activity and the earth is disturbed, uh, it disturbs where rats, rodents, and other wildlife and critters live. Uh, and so we should know, too, that um, all of our permitting requirements uh, require that developers have an active rodent management plan, that it should start before the development begins and it should be active throughout the course of the whole development. So neighbors and ANCs can also help us with that so that we are ensuring um, that those plans are, are being implemented um, prior, during, <coughs> excuse me, and during a project. Yes, ma'am. Are required to get compactors because the dumpsters right now, I'm a resident, all the dumpsters here have large cracks that are designed into the dumpsters. There's not holes, it's not de defects. They have three inch gaps between the covers. They are a feast for the rodents. 
DOH has been terrific. They've come when we called. They're wonderful. But they tell us that they can poison all they all they can, but it's not going to do an ounce of good with the type of dumpsters that are being used well, in what, their location. What we will do, and uh, businesses are required to manage waste in, uh, the doctor or Gerard might know the specifics of the statute. They're required to manage the waste in such a way um, that it uh, doesn't allow for rodents. And that includes a certain uh, a number of times that re pickup is required and the like. And I think the container is also required in the law. Is that right? Okay, so we may need to do some work in the statute um, to require um, statute here. Okay, to require the best uh, containers. It is not a requirement to have compactors um, at this at this stage. I, I have a question. Yes. So following up on that question, you know, and I want to say the Department of Health has been really wonderful. Thank you. But the problem that we have, and you know, the city can pour taxpayer dollars into it, but. All the technology in the world, the very basic fact is the restaurant's dumpsters are open. They, the, the, they just don't shut. So at a very basic level, the city simply needs to enforce that the restaurateurs have closed, sealed dumpsters. We're poisoning our lawns. Our kids can't play in the backyard. From Chevy Chase to Brooklyn Manor, we have a problem of rats where you have landlords. I think, and I, I think I'm agreeing with you. Yep, so I, think I think I'm agreeing with you. Is the city going to take an initiative to find and force the business owners to just shut the food waste dumpsters so the rats are not running in and out? I think that's exactly what we're talking about. What we've talked about is that's going to require a lot of approaches uh, in making sure that we have the right containers and that we our law requires the right containers so that when we go out to do enforcements, those fines actually stick. And have some have some teeth, um, and so I, we're we're agreeing with you, and we want to make sure that happens. But we also know education goes a long way, uh, and that's why we're here. Um, that's why we're going to call on our DSLBD, ANCs, community members to say these are the resources available. Avail yourself of these resources. Follow the law, and if you don't, this is what happens. So that I got you. At the alley back here. I mean, and, I heard your and, question, ma'am. Thank you. The rats are running through the building because there's no effort from the city to force the landlords or the restaurant owners. Well, I wouldn't agree with you on that. Uh, we have our staff at DPW and DOH out every day, and that's what they're doing. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.